During this lesson, we will be looking at recording equipment, which consists of two items that can be supplied as a combined unit, but normally are installed as separate items. They are the Flight Data Recorder, FDR, and the Cockpit Voice Recorder, CVR. Both are commonly called black boxes and are fitted to all commercial aeroplanes to record flight data and cockpit audio and to preserve the information so that it can be analysed in the event of an accident. They are painted red or orange to aid in their location, positioned near the tail area of the aeroplane to help deal with excessive g-forces and designed to withstand fire, shock, heat and water damage. Firstly, we will look at the flight data recorder equipment, its recorded parameters and EU Ops requirements. Then we will look at the same things for the cockpit voice recorder. One component in a typical flight data recording system is a digital recording system which records at least the last 10 or 25 hours of aircraft data. Connected to the flight data recorder is a flight data interface unit which collects and processes all input parameters. Those inputs include the main and additional parameters. The next component is a three-axis linear accelerator which measures acceleration in all three planes. In addition, there are two control panels. Firstly, the flight recorder control panel. This has a ground control switch which is latched in the auto position and will automatically turn the system on when airborne or on the ground with one engine running and for up to five minutes after engine shutdown. On selects the system on outside these parameters. The other control panel has an event marker switch which allows crews to mark an event for further investigation on return to base. Most modern digital flight recorders actually record hundreds of inputs, but the main inputs required for aeroplanes above 5,700 kilograms consist of either time or a relative time count, pressure altitude, indicated airspeed, heading, pitch and roll attitude, normal acceleration, radio transmission keying, thrust or power on each engine, thrust lever position including reverse thrust, configuration of lift and drag devices, total or outside air temperature, use of automatic flight control systems, and the angle of attack. Additional parameters, mandatory for aeroplanes above 27,000 kilograms, which are recorded, include the positions of primary flight controls and trim, radio altitude and navigation information displayed to the crew, cockpit warnings, and landing gear position. If you wish to see any of the images enlarged again, just click on them. EU Ops requires aeroplanes that are registered on or after 1st of April 1998 and having a maximum takeoff weight of 5,700 kilograms or less to be fitted with a digital flight data recorder that will record a minimum of the last 10 hours of operation. Aeroplanes with more than nine seats that are multi-engine turbine powered or aeroplanes weighing more than 5,700 kilograms require a digital flight data recorder capable of recording a minimum of the last 25 hours of its operation. The flight data recorder must start automatically before the aeroplane moves under its own power and stop automatically after it is incapable of moving under its own power. The flight data recorder must have a device such as a sonar locator beacon to assist in locating it in water. 
Aeroplanes of 5,700 kilograms or less may be fitted with a combined flight data recorder and cockpit voice recorder. An aeroplane may be dispatched with an inoperative flight data recorder, provided that it is not reasonably practical to repair or replace it before the flight. The aeroplane does not exceed eight further consecutive flights. Not more than 72 hours have elapsed since the unserviceability and any cockpit voice recorder required to be carried is operative unless it is a combined unit. We will now look at the cockpit voice recorder, which is basically a tape recorder with a control panel which incorporates a monitor display and an area microphone. The control panel has a test button which initiates a built-in test and this is indicated either by an LED or the monitor needle moving into the green segment along with a 600 or 800 hertz tone that can be heard via the headset jack. When the auto on switch is selected to auto, the cockpit voice recorder starts recording from when the first engine is started and then until five minutes after the last engine is shut down on the ground. When selected to ON, it will record outside the above parameters, switching back to AUTO when the first engine is started. The ERASE button will only erase the recording under the following circumstances. The aircraft is on the ground with the parking brake set and the engine shut down, and the ERASE switch must be held selected for a minimum of two seconds. On some control panels, like the one on the left, an area microphone is incorporated. Others use separate microphones around the cockpit. The voice recorder is a standard magnetic tape recorder, which is required to provide a minimum of 30 minutes of four-channel parallel recording. The system records any radio transmissions from the captain's, first officer's and observer's position. On one channel, we have the interphone from the captain's, first officer's and observer's position. The next channel records public announcements made from the captain's, first officer's and observer's position. The next channel records all navigation or approach aids selected by the crew. Finally, the area microphone records any conversations or noises heard within the cockpit environment. All aeroplanes registered before 1st of April 1998 and either weighing more than 5,700 kilograms or with more than nine seats and weighing 5,700 kilograms or less are required to have a cockpit voice recorder capable of recording the last 30 minutes of operation. Aeroplanes registered on or after that date being multi-engine turbine powered and having more than nine seats or a maximum takeoff weight of above 5,700 kilograms need to record a minimum of the last two hours of operation. Aeroplanes of 5,700 kilograms or less and registered on or after the 1st of April 1998 need to record a minimum of 30 minutes of operation. The recorder must record as a minimum all the parameters as stated earlier in this lesson. It must start to record prior to the aeroplane moving under its own power until the aeroplane is unable to move under its own power after shutdown. The cockpit voice recorder must have a device to assist in being located in water. An aeroplane may be dispatched with an inoperative cockpit voice recorder provided that it is not reasonably practical to repair or replace it before flight, the aeroplane does not exceed eight further consecutive flights, not more than 72 hours have elapsed since the unserviceability, and any flight data recorder required to be carried is operative unless it is a combined unit. During this lesson, 
you have learned about the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder. You have looked at the components in both the flight data recorder and cockpit voice recorder systems. Then you are shown the parameters that the flight data recorder and cockpit voice recorder record. Finally, you are shown the EUOPS requirements for both the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder.